Okay, it is noon. Let's see. Come on. Why is my watch telling me what time it is? That is, I just can't see it. Okay, it's 1221. I was going to take my walk around noon. And I was finishing up. Put some stuff away. Let's see. It's so 1221. It's March 11th. And it's Friday. And here I go across the street. Walk number two today. And walk number 11 of my walks. Tim made biscuits. Oh, I was sorely tempted to get a biscuit. Slather it with butter. And I have jelly. It's um, all fruit jelly. And it's way low sugar, but still. It's carbs. Biscuit is definitely carbs. Oh, it, I smelled them as soon as I come in the house. I was so tempted. I also come out to check the mill. Because I could hear the mail truck. But... Either he's already come down the street and we didn't get anything, or I hear him in the back streets and he hasn't been here yet. So we'll find out when I get back. Maybe I'll check it again if I remember. And I'm just wearing this fleece. I didn't put my um, flannel shirt on underneath because I figured it was warmer. I didn't check the temperature before I left the house. It was 48 at 940, and it's straight up noon, so I would think it's a little bit warmer. But there's a cool breeze. It's a little chilly. But by the time I get back, I'm just all sweaty. It's very unpleasant. I don't want to get over hot. And I could feel in my calves, again, a little bit of soreness. So tomorrow I might be sore from all the walking. Going downhill on my street, on kayak, passing Sugru Court, that little side street down the block from my house. Just quick praise to God that uh, I don't know, the very first day that I walked out, I was like, oh, I can do a live feed. And then, you know, somebody might see me. And just the the feeling of talking to a camera, I've, it, I've done it all for quite some time over the years is a way as talking to myself, but I, I record it so. And I upload it so it feels like I'm less alone. It's the activity of a lonely person talking on a camera. I saw a blue thing on the ground. I think it was a hair tie. <laughs> dog on the corner house. I think the people that lived there moved away and sold their house and it sat empty for quite a while. And now somebody else is living there. I got a dog. A barky dog. There he is. I see him behind the fence. Is it a pug? It might be a little pug. <laughs> You don't scare me. Oh, yeah. I got a little traumatized several years back. Back still when we had dogs. and Even around the time the kids would come over and uh, want to go for walks. 
this particular time I was by myself and I was on this street. I just crossed over to Sturdy. I was even on this side of the street. And this big, huge dog come up to me. And I was so afraid. I thought he was going to bite me. And he, he, he did put his teeth like around my wrist, but he didn't bite down. And these other two little boys come out with a leash in their hand. And they come and got him and clipped the leash on and started pulling him away back home. And he got loose again. The collar was too loose or whatever. And he came back over to me again. And did the same thing. He put his teeth around my wrist. You know, because he was big and because he could have easily have attacked me and I could have been mauled and bit, it traumatized me. Even though nothing bad happened, I... I didn't want to go for walks for a long time after that. I was like, you know, that was a close call. <laughs> Nothing bad happened. It was harmless. But the what ifs. Got a bad case of the what ifs. The only dogs has bit me over the years is my own stupid dogs. Ooh. Oops. Caught my toe on the sidewalk. <sighs> Thank the Lord I didn't fall down. Going up the hill, I'm sturdy. Mm. Yep, forgot to bring my gum, so now I'm going to get thirsty. I do got my chapstick. It'll help a little bit. And get it to come out. If I'm tripping on the sidewalk cracks, because I'm not lifting my feet high enough when I walk. Doing the tired shuffle. I just love this mild weather. <laughs> I'm ready for a weather change again. I know I get tired of it being so terribly, terribly hot in the summer. And by the time summer's over, I'm like glad for the respite and the leaves changing in the fall. I like the fall and the spring the best because it's uh, the milder temperatures. Summer's just too hot. If I had my RV, I'd hop in my car and maybe sometime in June and head north. Spend the whole summer up by the Canadian border, if not in Canada. And just get away from the temperatures. And then come December, head down to Florida for the winter and just stay in those milder temperatures year-round. Yeah, I feel my muscles. I have to do do some liniment. Liniment? Uh, liniment? Maybe be like my mom and get some uh, horse liniment. She swore by it and it's I think it comes in a pretty big bottle. I'm just slather that all over my legs. I also like listening to the birds singing. why I resisted walking. I know it's, you know, like I said, I don't like being alone, but it's really peaceful. It's actually quite relaxing to, do, well, now that I'm not so out of shape that walking at all just about kills me, but it's becoming relaxing, you know. I'm enjoying it more and more as I do it, just like I resisted reading scripture and 
I just enjoy it. I said the other day that I thought I was on uh, Genesis 10, but eh, I wasn't that far along. I think I was more like 6 or 7. Not Genesis, Exodus. Exodus. In fact, I think I quit last night and I had just started the ninth chapter of Exodus, the plagues. Let's see, what plague did I get up to? I think the plague of darkness. No, I know I did the, the, the plague that uh, the cattle. No, did the plague of boils. The plague, maybe it's plague of hell that comes next. I'm making all kinds of notes and seeing little differences between the plagues. You know, sometimes, several times God tells Moses to rise early or he gets up in the morning. So I think the plagues start like in the morning. They go that whole day. And then, I don't know if it's the same day that Pharaoh calls him in and says, you know, and treat your Lord that it'll go away. And then he says, in the, mo in the morrow, I'll, I'll pray. So it, it's got to be at least, some of them are at least 24 hours. And I'm thinking maybe two days. And there's a couple times where it, the scripture doesn't indicate that he goes and warns. In fact, it, sound, it looked to me like the, let's see the, Lice was first than flies, and I think those were two, those were back to back. And then there was that verse, either in eight or nine, that said, even for this, Pharaoh, this is why I raised you up, to show my, my power, might. Remind me of the verse that says, God knows how to reserve the wicked for the day of judgment. And then it talks about vessels fit for destruction. And, uh, but then I also thought of all the times that he's, that Moses told Pharaoh, I'm doing all this so you will know that I am God, that I am the Lord. So you will know there's none other person, no other God like me. And he's proven himself. In the first plagues, the uh, the snake, the, the um, turning the water to blood, and then uh, I think lice. First, actually, it was the first two plagues. The um, magicians used enchantments, and they could copy it, but after that, they couldn't do it anymore. And and then it says in the, when they broke out in boils that the magicians couldn't even stand before Moses. I guess they were bedridden with the boils. And each time it says, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not, and he would not let, to, let him go, neither would he let him go. And they kept a you know, hard heart. He wouldn't submit. He wouldn't surrender. He definitely wasn't repentant. He didn't acknowledge God as being God, as just and judge and all-powerful. Because the thought was Pharaoh himself was a god. And he was worshipped. So he was very arrogant. But he had all those opportunities. Every plague was an opportunity to repent. So even though he was a vessel fit for destruction, and God could reserve the wicked for judgment, God still always extends mercy. And I, every time Moses prayed, and it went away, there was one point, it was after the frogs, that they said there was a respite. I forgot about the frog one. Oh, going uphill in Aquas. Good morning. 
Yeah, well, I just started walking March 3rd. Doctor told me my A1C was 7.7. Yeah, so I decided to stop sitting on my butt all day. It's a good day to do yard work though. It's beautiful. Ah, your yard looks very nice, sir. Hey, morning. You should hear me grumbling all the way on my walk. <laughs> Why don't people pick up their garbage? And here you are. It looks wonderful. It's a great day for yard work. Not that their yards was one of the ones that were neglected. They're probably homeowners. This is me being judgmental, theorizing, supposing that people that own their home are more likely to do yard work and landscaping and stuff. And renters, you know, they're hard pressed to even mow the lawn. Sometimes, some people. Definitely the people that lived next door to my mom and dad all those years at the welfare house in the corner. It was a, it was a garbagey shack. And my mom bought the property eventually and the city said, we'll sell you the house, belong to the city, but you got to tear down the house. And she got a bulldozer and her son-in-law, Sean, he, uh, well, not a bulldozer. What do you call it? The little, the little things. The uh, whatever they're called. And he pushed it all down and scraped it all down. And I guess they even filled in the hole because there was a big like, basement. I don't know if they dug out all the blocks or they just covered up the blocks. But uh, yeah, they tore it down. Then she bought the house next door to that house and tore it down and. I don't know if she bought another one. And then they sold all that and moved to Florida and lived there until they died. But I can imagine the people in the neighborhood when those houses got tore down, especially the one on the corner. The other ones weren't so bad, but the one on the corner it was constantly being condemned. And he would come along and slap something up on the side and put a few nails here and there and put a rent sign on it and rent it again. And then people that live there, almost 100% of the time, did not mow their lawn and just did not take care of their property. In fact, I used to go over there and mow it. And the landlord got to know it. So he would tell people, oh, don't worry about it. I don't need to come up and mow it. The neighbor girl will do it. Huh. So, <laughs> I just did it because I didn't like to see it. And we were friendly with him. He'd come out sometimes and help me work on the mower to get it started because I had trouble starting it. I was probably only 12 at the time. 13, I wasn't very old. Going down the hill on Aqueous. Went around the corner, going down the hill. Coming up on the bus stop at Tours and Aqueous. Let's see, how long have I been walking? 19 minutes. And I'm not walking, pushing myself. Not when I'm doing three a day. I'm just walking. Just getting it done. Okay, crossing the street. That's pretty busy sometimes. Got to watch my step here. Crossing on tours and aqueous. And doing the last little bit of aqueous, going 
eventually up this slope to kayak. And it's particularly sunny right here on this corner. Whew. Mm -mm, thirsty. I get back home. I'll see about some lunch. I could get out some cubes. I cubed up some ham and some turkey and cubed some cheese and just like snack on some healthy stuff. Cheese, ham, turkey. I got some broccoli. I can make some little broccoli bites to chew. And I have an avocado. Putting off cutting into that because they go bad. You gotta cut them open and slice them up and eat them or they just go bad. Yeah, I remember this morning when I got it out, I was thinking salad. Top it on the salad. Oh. Look at that. I scored myself a fruit roll up. Fell out of a kid's, I don't know, I suppose their pocket or something. You know what fruit roll ups are? A little bit of fruit, a whole lot of. Uh, what do you call it? High fructose corn syrup, probably. Might as well eat, eat sugar from the sugar bowl. But it's got fruit, right? Fruit's healthy. How about an apple or a banana? Or a pear or a little container of some berries. Now that's healthy. Be like me and dip them in some cream cheese and whipped cream, a little vanilla and sweetener. Make a sweet cream, dip them in. Ooh. Uphill. I call fruit nature's nature's candy. I got um, a half apple from the oatmeal I made yesterday. And uh, at least two more. I gotta eat. And I discovered that apples are a very carby fruit. Ones that are not recommended by keto, like oranges. You can eat a lime though, just not oranges. Too sugary. But if you're going to, gotta have orange, then do oranges. Peel them and eat them rather than drinking the juice from the store because they put sugar in that stuff. First apple I cut in half for my oatmeal was brown. <laughs> Got rid of one that way. I had to throw it away. Feel it in my back. I gotta slow down this clip. I'm trying to catch my breath. The other side is steep, but it, at least it's short and this isn't as deep but it's so so very long yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. my scanner beeping at me low blue close alarm yeah. 
I think it, it still keeps track of my levels even when I'm not scanning. When you scan, it gives you a readout so you can see it. But I think as long as you're within range, it's uh, keeping track. Because I've had it in the other room on the charger next to our bedroom. And the beepers are going off and it tells me my blood sugar's low without me scanning. So it's, it's keeping track. And it just beeped again. I'm trying to get it out of my pocket. Oh. The scanner was not found. Or the sensor was not found. Scan the sensor again. Oh. I, I didn't scan it. That's why it wasn't found. Uh, just turned the corner. Now I'm on kayak. Almost done. Got to do this block in the other part of the block. Still on uphill. pill. And it's been 26 minutes. Starting to flatten, getting to the corner. 25 steps or so. Across the street at Sucru. At least that's how I'm pronouncing it. Crossing the street now. It's nice and flat. Whew. I can feel it in my legs. Uh, go back and slather them with some deep heat. Uh, maybe take an ibuprofen for my back. I can wait and see if it's, it'll stop as soon as I sit down. Relax. It's the strain that's, and it's not severe. It's just a little bit, a little bit to be annoying. Not like the first day. First day. <sighs> oh. Going past the big bush. Oh. Oh. There's a, a tree with red, bright, bright, bright red berries on it. So pretty. It's like, is there holly trees? I know there's, I think there's holly bushes. Holly tree? I don't know. Looks like a holly tree with red berries. Last house. Coming up on the two vehicles parked across the street where I cross. Coming up. Almost in the driveway. 28 minutes and 20 seconds. I go across the street. Okay. So it took me about 29 minutes to do the circle. Checking the mailbox. Nope. No mail. Okay. My second walk around noonish is done. And give me a second and I'll tell you what time it is. Because I started at 12 something. I don't remember what I said. Twelve fifty. Okay, down at twelve fifty. Oh, here comes the mailman too. Alright, goodbye. Mm -hmm.